This is the legendary Amilcar Cabral. 33 years ago, he led the island nation of Cape Verde to independence from Portugal. Today, this jewel of Africa is on the move. Hello, I'm Lynn Vaughn, reporting from the capital city, Praia, on the island of Santiago. For years as a young television reporter in Boston, I worked with some of the many people of the Cape Verdean diaspora who are now part of the American tapestry. But what has become of their homeland? Well, join us as we reveal the dynamic new democracy the Cape Verde Islands have become. This is, uh, I think, a new destination, and uh, it is uh, a country is doing well. We managed really to change completely the landscape of the country. From the independence to now, some 32 years ago, we are coming from a very poor country. And it's very interesting to see the improvement we are doing for the development of this country. The rapid pace of residential construction is equaled by the government's ambitious modernization and building initiatives. Building cranes are reshaping the skyline of Praia. Cape Verde is an exciting, it's an exciting country. It's in the right location. Amazingly, God put us in the middle of everybody. When the, the government decided to modernize the financial system, from then to now, there is, a, I would say, a significant change in the, in the banking system in Cape Verde. Two years ago, the bank interest rate was 14%. Right now, it's 7%. The country now gives you a chance to really expand. The nation's prosperity is lifting many Cape Verdeans into the upper middle class. More and more residents are building these spectacular homes. There is assistance for business. They have created some institutions that support the local market. We call it the Praia Towers, the Twin Towers of Cape Verde. It's a symbol of peace. There are opportunities here for our Cape Verdeans in the United States, for in France, in, in England, but also for our diaspora, our uh, you know, going beyond Cape Verdeans. We grew last year almost 7% uh, in real terms in a context of stable prices. Uh, so we are taking advantage of the opportunities that the current environment offers us. Cape Verde now is in a very, very nice moment because you can do big investment as you can do small investment. You can build hotels, but you can build resorts. You can do real estate for, for tourism. With small money, you can do a very modern project. You don't have to be a big investor to, to have the opportunity here. You just have to be an entrepreneur, to have some funds, some knowledge, and then to choose the right, the right opportunity. Most of the roads throughout the country are cobblestone, laid in a beautiful mosaic of patterns by women laborers over the years. But Praia is reluctantly letting go of this historic feature in favor of newer and faster roadways. Cape Verde is a very nice country, as you, you can see. You can, uh, uh, you can relate with people very, very easily and we have a very nice weather all the year, so I would say it's a nice, nice place to invest and to live. Up until recently, Capo Verde didn't have the infrastructure in terms of hotel room, but now we have seen many complexes being built over the, few, the last few years, and there are more to come. So there's a big, big demand, especially from Europe, to 
come to Cabo Verde to enjoy the nice sunshine. I've been here 15 months, no rain, so what more can you ask for? There are nine airports. Of which there are three that are certified right now as international airport. They are, uh, of course, Praia, the, the capital city. There's uh, Boa Vista, which is the new destination for tourism. And also the long-term one is Sao. And the fourth one will be on board at the end of this year called Seven Cent. The objective of the Cape Verdean Airport Authority is to invest in our infrastructure to increase our capacity to handle more traffic. We still have some limitations. We are working to improve our passenger terminals. We believe that once we achieve these objectives, we will have more traffic from Boston, Lisbon, London and from other destinations. Cape Verde is a small country, but she has a vast diaspora. When we analyze Cape Verde's success, we must consider both sides. Cape Verdeans living in Cape Verde and the diaspora communities in the US, Europe, Africa, and South America. It's together that we have achieved this development we enjoy today. The country has come a long way since it became independent uh, nearly 32 years ago and it's come a long way in the last five years and I expect it to continue that trajectory. Something important happened, I think, uh, these few years is uh, Cap Verdean uh, believes that they have a future because uh, before it was not evident uh, that we, we can develop and for the growth that we have uh, these few years and. Uh, and the development that we have at this moment, the big change is we believe that we have a future and an independent future, so we, we can be part of uh, the international community. Cape Verde is opening its doors to the world, inviting us all to experience its rich cultural heritage, its peaceful, stable government, and its warm, hospitable people. There is no question Cape Verde is proving itself to be a rising star of Africa. I'm Lynn Vaughn reporting from the island of Santiago.